Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Marshall. We live in a world where man's achievements are immense and his brutalities unparalleled. The rack of the Inquisition in medieval Spain could not compare with the instruments of torture used on the world's population today. Yet now, as then, there are no absolutes of goodness or of evil. Some of the great secrets of our cosmos have been unearthed by men who were guilty of terrible deeds. And members of the world of academia who train the minds of young people are themselves in need of help to combat malignant forces in their own psyches. Dr. Sherby, your answering service said you'd be here. I hate to disturb you, but I... Well, that's quite all right, Chief. Well, what can I do for you? Well, I'd like you to come with me, Doctor. We need your help. Well, I'm not much at forensic medicine. This is in your line. There was a break-in at the Claymore Animal Shelter. I can't see why I... I figure it must be a psychopath. Place looks like a slaughterhouse. Animals ripped apart and savaged. Only you can figure out who and why. Our mystery drama, The Bloody Legend was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Milt Wissoff and stars Arnold Moss and Terry Keene. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Demons have pursued men since the beginning of time. The Egyptian Book of the Dead tells of evil ones that set snares for human souls. And the Bible refers to shadowy spirits like pestilence that walketh in darkness. Our literature is sprinkled with dibbocks and golems that move men to evil by possessing their souls. Our tale deals with the mind and its fantasies, with acts so foul that only demons can move a man to commit. That was a marvelous, marvelous production, Martha. I enjoyed every minute. Oh, I did too, Frank. I wonder what kept Dash. Uh, you know that husband of yours. Absent-minded professor. He never used to be. <laughs> well, he's just been working too hard, that's all. You know, what with his classes and his Beowulf book, he tends to forget what he considers uh, trivia. I know. I've begged him to slow down. Uh, Frank, he respects you as a doctor. You're the only one he would open up to. Well, I'd be happy to help him, but he's come of his own free will. And just what is free oh, will? Oh, Dash, oh. I was so worried. There's no need for concern, dear. I just got caught up at the library and never noticed the time. How was the play? Oh, it was great. Pity you missed it. Well, why don't I make up for my rudeness, hmm? Let's have a drink to celebrate. Waiter, two martinis and a double Gibson straight up. And may thy way be moved by might of wind. Dash, do you think you should? Well, of course I do. You've got to stop mothering me, my dear. The quote to the waiter, Dash? Borrowed, roughly, from Beowulf. Oh, and uh, how is your book on Beowulf coming? Oh, in fits and starts. But I'm really immersed in it. Sometimes I feel I'm back in the ancient Danish kingdom, living among those primitive peoples. Hmm. What, what was that reference to free will I overheard as I arrived? I was telling Frank I'd like you to consult him. About what? You've been pushing too hard. Because I missed a play? No, no, not just that. You've become so withdrawn, I scarcely get to talk to you these days. Look, can't we change the subject? Now, where, where's that waiter with our drinks? Uh, simmer down, Dash. Our help is on the way. I see him bearing beverages. Good, good. Let's enjoy the moment. Dash, will you see Frank? For my sake, please. Oh, for heaven's sake, yes, if it makes you happy. Now that that's settled, let's have a toast. 
<laughs> to dreams of glory and of doom. Did you make the deposit when you were in town? Did I? Oh, good heavens, I've still got the slips and all in my pocket. Oh, well, uh, give it to me. I'll take care of it this afternoon. Oh, I slipped again. That's not important. When are you going in? Uh, soon. Will you, uh, replenish the bar? We're running sort of low. We're running low too fast, Dash. No, no, don't start that again, Martha. Will you? Yes, yes. And I'll visit Frank as soon as I get a chance. Take time today. You look so tired, darling. Why don't you lie down for a while? Well, I... I am a bit bushed. I'll be back in an hour, so I'll hook the phones up to the recorder. Now, wait, here. Let me make you comfortable. Hmm? Oh, that... That feels good. Martha. prowess of people kings, of spear-armed Danes in days long sped. Since he first lay friendless, fate repaid him, for he waxed under Welkin in wealth he throve, till before him the people far and near heard his mandate gave him gifts, a good king he. Huh? Huh? Oh. What, what, what is... Oh, Martha. It's you. You're back. You were so deep in sleep I could hardly rouse you. Well, how, how do you feel? I don't know. I, I should feel rested, but I'm I'm tired. Bone tired. My, my hand, it aches. Oh, good Lord. It's covered with grime. And there's something under your nails. Green... And it smells. Uh, it's impossible. I haven't moved since you left. The dream. What was it? Well, nothing important. Tell me, please. No, no I, I can't remember. It was disturbing. Dash, I... please don't put me off any longer. See Frank today. All right, Martha. I hope... I hope he has some answers. <laughs> I don't know how to begin, Frank. Well, why not start with what's bothering you? Well, I don't know. I I get confused at times. Sometimes I feel I've said something or done something, and it's not true at all. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I have no recollection of things I've really done. Well, could you be specific? Well, like, like the theater the other night. I could have sworn I was with you... When I was in the library all night. Uh, but finally, you did remember? Sure. Mm -hmm. After the bell rang to notify us that the library was closing, it was like waking up, you know? Uh -huh. Everything seemed so unreal for a moment. Well, probably an aberration, uh, temporary. Now, uh, is, there, is there anything that's causing you anxiety? Well, not that I can think of. Mm -hmm. How about the past? Can you tie this in with some period of stress or anxiety, huh? How far back? As far back as you'd care to go. Well, I don't know, Frank. My mother... Let's go on. Oh, she raised me, you know. Yes, that's what mothers generally do. No, no, she yeah. did it all by herself. Your father? He was a weak man, a dreamer, always puttering with some invention that never paid off. My mother ran a little business that put food on the table. My father was of little importance around our house. I see. Did she dominate you as well? <laughs> Does a shark have teeth? I was a bookworm when I was a kid. I spent all my spare time in the attic, devouring tales of the Middle Ages, knights, dragons, wars, chivalry. Mm -hmm. It was all fantasy and so much more real than life outside. Well, how does this tie in with your mother? Well, all she could see was my father all over again. She kept rooting me out of the attic, driving me out to the playgrounds and later to the ballpark. She kept hacking away at my love for books. I began to hate the sight of her, the sound of her voice. I began to wish she were dead. Oh, please answer. Oh, why don't you answer? Well, take it easy, Martha. Where can Dash be this time? Well, it's still early in the evening. You know, he'll walk through that door 
Then you'll feel awfully foolish. Well, I wish you would. I don't mind appearing foolish. Oh. There you see. He's home. At last. Hi, folks. Well, the silence is penetrating. You've been drinking, Dash. Oh, yes, I certainly have. And why not? When you're in a bar all evening waiting for someone to show up, you've got to order something. Well, who are you waiting for, Dash? Well, that's a pretty stupid question coming from you. I was waiting for you. Well, I've been here for hours. So I see. Well, why weren't you where you were supposed to be? Was I, uh... <clears throat> was I supposed to be at the bar? Well, don't you remember? You called me earlier and asked me to meet you at the inn. Well, st- sit down, Dash. Now relax. Frank, did you call him? Well, I-, I may have. Don't try to protect him. Did you call him? Now, no, hold on just a minute, Martha. Don't you believe me? Your track record hasn't been so great this past week, Dash. Just what does that mean? For one thing, your unprovoked attack on Professor Denevsky. Oh, that didn't amount to a hill of beans, typical academic brouhaha. He said something, I retorted a few angry words, and it was all but over. But that's just it. You never got involved in a hassle in your life. You're the gentlest man I've ever known. Yeah, but Frank here advised me to assert yes, myself. Yes, yes, yes. That, that's right. That's right. I did tell Dash not to hold things inside. Did you advise belligerence? Well, not exactly. Uh, Look, now this is getting nowhere. Why don't you go to bed, Dash? I know things will look different in the morning. A good idea. I don't relish this inquisition. Good night. My lauded deeds shall an earl have honor in every clan. Forth he fared... In the roadstead rocked an ice-flecked vessel. High o'er his head they hoist the standard, a golden banner. Grave with their spirits, mournful their mood. To him was given such glory of war. Hello, Frank. I'm glad you're there. It's Dash. No, he's still asleep. But his clothes are all rumpled, Frank, and his sleeve is smeared with blood. I think we'll have to, we'll have to take your advice. Ask them to come. I'll have him dressed when they get here. He looks so forlorn. Well, he's pretty heavily sedated. Have there been any reports? No, no, none, Martha. Now you mustn't think of it. No, the usual kinds of violence and crime, but nothing the police can't account for. What about the blood stains? Well, I, I had them checked out, uh, confidentially. It wasn't even human blood, Martha. Oh, Frank, what will I do now? We, Martha. Now, I'm here to help. You know, I think a vacation at the shore, you know, change of scenery. And, and I know just the place. It's a small town. It's good food on the coast. Fresh air. How soon can we leave? Well, few days here, and I'm certain Dash will be able to travel. Now, right now, I'd suggest some hot food for you. No, Dash needs me. No. He needs you to lean on, Martha. You won't do him any good if you go to pieces, too. There. Now, isn't that better? Well, it would be a lot better if Dash were here to enjoy this dinner. Dr. Sherby, your answering service said you'd be here. I, I hate to disturb you. Oh, that's quite all right, Chief Anderson. What is it? I'd like you to come with me. <laughs> My part illegally. It's no laughing matter, Doc. We need your help. Well, I'm not much of a hand at forensic medicine. I... This is in your line, believe me. There was a break-in at the Claymore Animal Shelter. Well, I can't see how Must I... Must be a psychopath did it. We figured you could give us some insight... The place looks like a slaughterhouse. Animals ripped apart and savaged. Oh, no. No. That couldn't be. The mind can be an illumination, a shining light that brightens the world for all time to come. Or it may be a bottomless pit where horrors sink beneath the conscious level, better left in darkness. Most of us have shameful acts stored away, acts we cannot bear to face. This, in turn, triggers some of us to commit acts beyond all reason. Will this happen again? We may know shortly when we return with Act Two. One 
of the great pioneers of modern psychiatry, Alfred Adler, wrote that fantasy is a creative faculty of the soul. But fantasy misused can become a kind of power intoxication. It can lead a man to turn from loyal friend to ardent foe, from loving husband to murderer. Too often we have seen this tragic course run by individuals who everybody swears is the nicest kid on the block. Oh, we'll be there soon, Dash. Is everything all right? Fine. Just fine. Oh, you're going to love the house. It's modern, all glass, on a small hill overlooking the sea. I wish you hadn't. Please, Dash. You've got to make an effort. Well, I'm trying. But I don't think I'm ready. Time will tell. Just relax. Give it a chance. How about a little music, hmm? Oh, the sea and the air will do you more good than any pills. And it'll be a tonic for me. Of course it will. Forgive me, Martha, dear. I've been forgetting how you've suffered. Nonsense. No, it's true. I've been selfish. You've been going through hell, too. Well, we only have one way to go now. Heaven's just over the next rise. This is County Sheriff Blunt. Uh, we interrupt this program for a special report. Terror struck Glenville County again today when the mutilated body of Jane Coggins was discovered by a group of children along the Cairo Nature Trail. A 25-year-old student has been missing for almost a week. Well, why did you shut it off? It's too nice a day for that kind of news. I wanted to hear what happened. We may be in danger. Darling, we have left Glenville behind. Now, there's nothing to worry about. Oh, please, Martha, let's turn back. Too late, my love. We have arrived. Oh, Dash, give it a whirl, please, for my sake. Okay, for your sake. But promise me, if anything happens to me, don't try to find out why. Just leave. Get away as fast as you can. You sound like you've peeked into your handy-dandy crystal ball. I have. And all I see is doom. <laughs> Isn't it everything I said it was? The sun, the salt spray, the sound of the sea. Yes, it is nice. When, it, when is Frank due? How long will he be staying? Oh, a while. And he's just here for a visit, hmm? Well, he enjoys the sun and the ocean. Yeah, but you're ducking the question, Martha. Dash, you, you really can't separate a man out. He's a, a friend. And a psychiatrist. Well, what's the harm? You don't have to use his professional services anymore if you don't want to. My goodness, that wind is starting to raise a little cane. I think I'd better batten down the hatches. We just might have ourselves a storm. Well, I'll give you a hand. No, no, no need for that. Just a few windows. Why don't you soak up the remaining sunshine while you can? I'll be right back. Uh, wake me if I doze before Frank arrives. I promise. Just relax. king of the Danes, an heir was born, and long he ruled when his father was gone. Far flew the fame of Beowulf in the Scandian lands, and there was treasure for the thanes and pleasure in the master mead house. With envy and anger, an evil spirit endured the din of revel until the fiend of hell, Grendel the monster mighty, in moorland living, in fen and fastness, stirred. Who is Grendel Dash? A monster child of the sea hag, hater of Beowulf and his themes. I know. But who is Grendel now? Who is the monster you he dream of? He is a demon full of hate waiting to spring upon the innocent. Who is he in your life? He is... No one... He cannot be. He is no. Well, hello, Frank. When did you arrive? Uh, just a few minutes ago. Well, you're lucky. It's really coming down. Where's Dash? Uh, out. 
In this storm? Yes, he just ran off. I couldn't stop him. Why? Well, something spooked him. I overheard him talking in his sleep, and I asked him some questions, and he panicked. Well, why didn't you go after him? I did, but he was out of sight before I, before I got past the terrace. Now, don't worry, Martha. If he isn't back in a while, I'll go after him. But as soon as his fright wears off, he'll head home. I hope so, Frank. The storm's dying down. Just a little rain and wind now. Oh, Frank, where can he be? Sun should be out before long. But it's not like him just wandering off. Oh, it's not unusual, Martha, in his condition? What is his condition exactly? He is recovering. Now, by that I mean he's trying to get a hold on reality. And is he succeeding? More and more. But he still has moments of uh, disconnection. Did you hear that? Hmm? Yes. Dash. Dash? Is that you? Oh, my darling, you're drenched. It's thirsty. What? Are you all right, Dash? Here, Dash, here. Here, drink this. Oh, it was horrible, horrible. What was horrible? The nightmare. I... I'm exhausted. All right, all right, lie down, and I'll cover it, you. It was just... It, 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 it was awful. Oh. He's out. His forehead's burning hot. He probably has some fever. Aren't you going to do something? Sleep is what he needs right now. And it wouldn't do you any harm either. Now, you get to bed, and I'll psych out here. Are you sure? Nothing more will happen now. <laughs> Moorland, by misty crags, the monster Grendel came. On the welkin he walked to the wine palace. There streamed from his eyes fearful flashes like flame to see. Straightway, he seized a warrior and tore him fiercely asunder. The bone frame bit, drank blood in streams, swallowed him piecemeal. Uh, Mrs. Saxon? Yes, who is it? This is Sheriff Blunt. Are you all right? Yes. Why do you ask? Well, there was a little trouble this morning, what with the storm and all. Uh, would you mind if I dropped in to see you in a while? No, not at all. Good. I'll see you soon. Little trouble? Well, don't pay to alarm folks unnecessarily. Any word on the couple in the car? They're coming around. It was quite a shock. Yeah, they were pulled up in the storm when they heard this ruckus and the screams. Mm. Poor Zig, he was a mess. Yeah, it's kind of turned my stomach, too. I've seen a lot of dead men. What kind of a maniac would do a thing like that? Somebody so full of hate, Johnny, he's got to rip and tear to quiet down what's eating him. I'm going out to see Mrs. Saxon. You keep after them lab fellas. Any word comes in, don't wait. Call me there. Anything else? At this point, maybe a little word upstairs. We need all the help we can get. What was the trouble you mentioned on the phone, Sheriff? Uh, Zig Elkins, the tavern owner, was killed during the night. Oh, well, the storm was bad. No, Mrs. Saxon. He wasn't killed by the storm. Not directly, anyhow. Well, what do you mean? Seems... Like we've got a maniac loose. Maniac? Mm-hmm. But the storm could have had something to do with it. It seems to breed violence. Glenville Carney had a similar incident not too long ago. What's going on here? Uh, oh, yeah, you must be Mr. Saxon. That's right. Uh, this is Sheriff Blunt, dear. He came out to see if we were all right. Did uh, you notice anything unusual during the night or hear anything? Well, not above the storm. Well, I take it uh, you all stayed indoors. Well, who'd be fool enough to go out and all that? Well, somebody did. We got a body to show for it. A victim of the storm? A victim of a human storm. A murder. Oh, no. I... I... Did you want to add anything, Mr. Saxon? He was under sedation all night. Oh, have you been ill? He's recovering. I asked him, Mrs. Saxon. Well, Mr. Saxon? Well, as she says, I've been recovering from a, a breakdown. Ah, uh, I see. 
I don't think you do, Sheriff. What have we got so far? Lots of prints and blood and more footsteps than you can pick up around my backyard. Mm-hmm. Did the lamb boys pin any of it down? Blood belonged to Zig. At least it was the right type. How about footprints? They were huge. Really outsized. Didn't look like human prints at all. They found uh, traces of seaweed in the prints. Possible. He might have come up through the beach and picked some up. Not according to Doc. Too much of it. And it was mixed with some kind of tarry substance. Smelled awful. Hmm. That is strange. What else? Doc feels that there was savvy mixed up in the killer's madness. He savage Zig, but he used some kind of tool to do it. The information you requested is coming in, Sheriff. Hmm. Uh, let me see. This is to confirm our findings. Hmm, it's interesting. The situation in Glenville County is almost a duplicate of ours. Lots of blood and the same damn footprints. Down to the seaweed and all. Violent storm, too. Looks like this guy's got a traveling act. Some orange juice, dear? Dash? Uh, no. No, thanks. I think we ought to go back, Martha. Darling, Frank feels you're not ready yet. Well, I know me better than he does. By the way, where is he today? He hasn't asked me a single question. Oh, he's in town. He should be back any moment. Uh-huh. Oh. Right on cue. He does have a flair for theatrics. Oh, Dash, that's unfair. He's been a good friend to you. A friend? Well, you may be right. Well, up and enjoying the lovely weather. Can you spare some coffee, Martha? Oh, sure. How about something to eat? Uh, some toast, please. Mm-hmm. I'm famished. That's what you get for running out so early. What was so important, Frank? Just some loose odds and ends to take care of. I had to cancel out my appointments this week, for one thing. Could have saved yourself the trouble. We're going back. I'd suggest you take it easy for another week. Sorry. Why don't we talk about this tomorrow? There's nothing to discuss. I've made up my mind. I want to get back to my book and my students. Uh, I meant to tell you, Dash. The dean's replaced you for the rest of the semester. Without notifying me? Oh, I spoke to him. Well, I brought some eggs, too, Frank. Oh, thank you, Martha. I wonder if you'd leave us alone for a few minutes. No, you stay right here, Martha. She's got a right to know everything about me. Of course. I just think we should have a session. No, I'll go. I've got lots to do. Start packing. Frank? I said start packing. I'll be in the house if I'm needed. I suggest you do the same if you're leaving with us, Frank. Well, my few things are ready. How about a drink? One for the road, so to speak? You know, I don't touch this stuff anymore. I meant some juice. There's no harm in that. I just had some. Vitamins, Dash. They're good for you. Here, have a slug. To Beowulf. May your books set upon their ear. To Beowulf. No. Let's just chat for a while, Dash. It's still early. Chat away, Frank. Do you feel rested? Oh, I slept like a log. Could always use more, I suppose. I am feeling drowsy. Well, maybe we should postpone our talk while you get a few winks. It's strange. I felt so alive before you came. I, <laughs> I have that effect on some people. I think I... I will have a snooze. Dash, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I hear you. Your hands are covered with grime. Yes. You've been digging in the earth with your hands. Have I? Yes, you have. Why, Dash? Why were you digging? I can't remember. I can't remember. I... And remember. Johanna.
Johannes Kepler, the great astronomer, once came to the conclusion that a man's physical surroundings acts upon his life like the loops a farmer ties around the pumpkins in his field. The loops may not cause the pumpkins to grow, but they determine its shape. The same applies to man's physical surroundings. They do not endow a man with his history, but they do mold his condition. Perhaps this is the cause that moves our killer to act. We shall know more shortly when we return with Act Three. Where does the legend of demons arise? In superstition, some say cynically. But as Eliphas Levy pointed out many years ago, superstitions are instinctive. And all that is instinctive is founded in the very nature of things. Let us return then with renewed attention and less cynicism to the superstition of demons and their struggle with our strange and bloody killer. Dash? Dash? How about some time out for food, hmm? We just had breakfast. Seven hours ago. Now, I brought you some ham and cheese. Oh, you say that looks good. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I am hungry. Oh, it's good to see you hard at work again. And it's good to be home again. Well, don't overdo it. Beowulf has me in his clutches. Have you heard from Frank? He calls now and then. I'm glad I'm out of his clutches. Oh, that's unfair, Dash. He has been a good friend. Well, I agree. I just don't want ever to need him again professionally. Well, I'm sure you won't. You look well. You're as good as new. Well, I hope the dean agrees. I'm hoping to see him this evening. Why don't you concentrate on the book for the rest of the semester? Hmm? Well, you said I'm as good as new. Well, but there's no point in pushing yourself. Besides, there's only six weeks left until summer vacations. But I want to leave knowing that I'm back in full stride. I'll, I, I, I'll take it, Martha. Hello? Yes, yes, this is he. Oh. Well, I see. Well, then maybe tomorrow... No, no, I agree. That wouldn't make much sense now. Well, maybe when we return, hmm? Good. Sure, have a nice summer. Was that Dean Morrison? Yes. He doesn't want me to push too hard either. Oh, darling, you'll be back on campus in the fall. Will I? Morrison didn't sound too encouraging. That's your imagination, Dash. You're one of his prize scholars. Was, now, you mean. That is enough of that. Finish your lunch and get back to work. Slave driver. Just until six. You and I have a dinner engagement. One good thing about being in the doghouse, people stay away in droves. Oh, even if it were true. Do you mind? No, not in the least. I enjoy dining alone with you, darling. <laughs> oh, guess who's coming to dinner? Well, there you are. I tried you at home. Well, now, how did you know we were here? Oh, it wasn't too hard. This is your favorite beanery. <laughs> we were just about to order dessert. Won't you join us? I'll just have some coffee. I had a sandwich on the way up. Up? From where? The beach. I had a few details to take care of. You know, we left so suddenly. You know, you look well, Dash. How's the book coming? Fabulously. He'll be through by the end of the week. There speaks the voice of confidence. Excuse me, I'll be right back. What happened, Martha? Oh, a small setback. At least that's how Dash feels. He was really looking forward to picking up where he left off, but Dean Morrison asked him to take the rest of the semester off. Well, that's not too bad. Well, I guess not. What were you doing at the beach? I told you, a few personal errands to take care of. You are avoiding answering. Very well. The sheriff called. He had some questions to ask, and he also wanted permission to check through the house. And? He found nothing extraordinary. He took samples of smears he found in the garage. Did he say anything? Not a word. He's the strong, silent type. Martha. Yes. Martha. Are you all right? My goodness, you're as white as a sheet. I, I'm not feeling well. Oh. I, I, I hate to spoil the evening. No, no, that, that's all right. We were just about through with dinner. Well, let's go what? quickly. I, I feel so... Oh, help him. Frank, help him. You're 
tired, Dash. Yes, yes, I'm tired. My eyes are heavy. Dash, just hear my voice. The woman you keep seeing, who is she? I... I can't say. You must answer me. The sea hag. My mother. You hated her. Yes. You wanted her to die. No. You wanted her dead. Grendel's mother, the sea hag, monster of women, was doomed to dwell in the dreary waters, cold sea courses, since Cain cut down with edge of sword his only brother, his father's offspring. Outlawed, he fled, marked with murder, from men's delights beset by fate sent ghosts. What? What's happening? It's all right. You've been asleep. How do you feel now? Pooped. Have I been out long? About three hours. Frank drove you home. You went right to bed. Frank? Oh, yes, yes, his office. I had such a headache. I... Who is it? Chief Anderson, Mrs. Saxon. May I come in? Could you come back in the morning? No, I'm, I'm afraid not. There's a note of urgency in your voice, Chief. Have you been in town for the past few days? Yes, we've been here. At home? Well, not every second. Martha had some shopping to do. I visited Frank Sherby at his office. Anybody else see you, Mr. Saxon? No, but I did speak to Dean Morrison. Dash, before you answer any more questions, I'd like to know what this is all about. No reason why you shouldn't, Mrs. Saxon. Uh, Sheriff Blunt called. He asked me to check your house. With your permission, of course. Help yourself, Chief. I'd prefer to wait until Blunt gets here. He's on his way in from town. Uh, sit still. I'll get it. Hello? Who? Oh, yes. Just a moment. It's for you, Chief. Oh, thanks. Hello? I, I see. No, just the three of us. Okay, see you soon. Things have changed. I, I'm going to have to ask you both to stay right here and act natural. Uh, what's beyond that door? Dash's study. I'll wait in there. Now, don't worry. How can we help worrying? I wish I knew just what this... Just relax, Martha. Is the coffee still hot? Uh... Just about. Well, let's have a cup. Uh, darling, excuse me, but I need the aspirin now. Or perhaps I should ask the chief's permission to leave the room. Oh, go on, Martha. It's all right. Dash. Dash, what happened? Well, nothing, Frank. You look like a man possessed. Where is she? Martha? Well, she's in there. Well, I'm too late. Dash, why? Why did you do it? Are you sober, Frank? That's the wrong question, Dash. Oh, Chief Anderson, good Lord, you you cannot blame Dash. I'm not blaming Did they that. drag you over here too, Frank? What? What? It can't be. You're wrong, Dr. Sherby. Dead wrong. Why did you rush in here? Uh, that is privileged information. Not in the case of homicide. Well, I'd like to know too. Well, I was worried. After the session with Dash this afternoon, I thought he... I thought he might, uh... Do what, Frank? Well, it doesn't matter. Nothing happened. Well, come on now. What are you afraid of? Do you really want to know? Well, of course. I was afraid you might harm Martha. Especially after you called her... The Sea Hag. I, I thought... You mean you tried to plant the idea at the session... And you wanted to see if it had actually worked? You're mad, Dash. I thought your profession frowned on those terms. That must be Sheriff Blunt now. You have the papers, Blunt? Uh, sure thing, Anderson. We had a look around? Yeah, and seen enough. Dr. Sherby, you'd better come along with us. We'd like to talk to you at the station. You're making a mistake, Anderson. Won't be the first. Let's go. Good night, Martha. Dash. Who would have thought? Frank, of all people... I can't believe it. Neither can I. This is a world of strange and mysterious happenings. <sighs> Darling, are you ready for bed? No, not after that. Now, why don't you hit the sack? I'll listen to some music and look over the last chapter of my book. Are you sure? Very sure. Good night, dear. 
Good night, Dash. Don't stay up too late. Although the scenes of Beowulf were laid in an old dramatic court and kingdom, the picture of life seems to have been drawn from the England of the unknown past that pieced together the legendary doings of the Teutonic hero king. Then the sea hag grasped Beowulf with grisly claws as she strove to shatter the hero king. With loathsome hand, this brine wolf bore him to the floor of the sea, where sea beasts many tried with fierce tusks to tear his mail, but with mighty stroke he swung his blade. Swift on her part, she paid him back. The Lord of Heaven allowed his cause, and easily he arose, his blade triumphant as the monster mother shrieked. Don't, please, in the name of Heaven, Dash, don't. <laughs> be all right, Doc? I hope so. There's no physical damage, thank God. You and the sheriff moved quickly. I'm sorry we had to put her through all this, but uh, we didn't have enough evidence to hold him. Oh, poor Dash. He was so obsessed with the tale of Beowulf, he became part of the legend. He kept vacillating between the role of king and monster at first, and finally he resolved his dilemma in his distorted way. Well, I better get back. Things could be a lot more peaceful now that this one's all wrapped up. Well, maybe so, but one thing still bothers me. Hmm? What about the outsized footprint we found? And the seaweed and the pitch? Never got an answer for that. Let's hope we never do, Tom. Whatever came out of the sea, may it never come again. <laughs> So our tale for tonight has run its tortuous course. A tale of deceit and treachery, of victims and monsters. Or were they all monsters? All victims? Are the pressures that build up within us by a dehumanized society responsible? Or is there individual guilt? Original sin? Better minds than mine have tried to unravel that twisted scheme and to no avail. I'll be back shortly. In our tale, we found a man obsessed from childhood, moved to slay because constraints were drawn about him. His acts became increasingly violent as he became increasingly obsessed by the feats and legends of a Saxon hero. But... What of the facts still unexplained? What of the footprints and the traces locked once again in the fastness of the sea? Think about them and remain uneasy. Or discard them as irrelevant and sleep well. Our cast included Arnold Moss, Terry Keene, Earl Hammond, and Robert Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. <laughs> Now, a preview of our next tale. Do you hear anything? Music of some kind. Somebody's whistling. It's Yankee Doodle. Seems to be coming from that window. Come, let's see. Oh, please be very careful, Cousin Amy. Open the drapes slowly. Cousin Susan, quickly. Quickly, come here at once. What is it? What's wrong? Look out there, in the dark. Do you see what I see? Where? Up up there, among the branches of that huge tree. <gasps> it can't be. Do you suppose it, oh, it is the face and head of Cuthbert Frush tilted over to one side, floating in the air, bathed in a kind of eerie blue light? Just his head and face. Nothing more. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. 
Until next time, pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater.